Hey, good morning, everyone. How are you? It is Monday, May 4th. It is Mantra Monday, and it is time for verse 4, part 4 of the Shikshastakam. But first, I want to give a shout out to Betsy Aola Sanders, who conducted a fabulous stay at home, Zoom online, yoga, mantra, and sound bath session. Uh, I took some of her yoga class and boy, did that feel good. You know, I didn't realize how much my nervous system has been impacted by, well, just staying at home. <laughs> and uh, I've been doing a lot of chores and such around here. And uh, to be honest, haven't been sleeping that well at night for a long time. And that does, does take a toll on you. Uh, but probably partially because of the yoga class I took with Betsy yesterday, I felt much better. Uh, you know, all the nerve endings and everything just kind of bunch all the way down in the lower back down there. And it's, uh, it's really important to take care of that. So it was a fabulous session and here's to more events, you know, like that. And thank you to everyone who attended. So I'm going to take a sip of my beverage. I've really been enjoying uh, getting into the Shikshastakam verses, and I hope that you have too. So I changed my studio today, and I'm going to lean forward, and I'm going to read to you the Sanskrit and then the word for word, and then we're going to break down the meaning for this verse 4, which you will find in uh, chapter 20, Antya Lila of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, written by Krishnadas Kaviraj and completed in the year 1615 about the life and times and lila of the Saint Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who left condensed instructions for us during this time of transformation uh, on how to get in touch with the Supreme and how to live on this earth and how to practice humility and detachment and to actually advance and progress spiritually. It's a, it's a high bar, but uh, his Leela and pastimes are beautiful and captivating and often humorous as well. So it's a wonderful example for us. So here we go. Na Danam, Na Janam, Na Sundarim. Kavitam Vajigad Isha Kamaye Mama Janmani Janmanishvare Bhavatad Bhaktir Aihutuki Tvai. I'm going to read that again. Na Danam Na Janam Na Sundarim Kavitam Vajigad Isha Kamaye. Good morning. Mama Janmani Janmanishvare Bhavatad Bhaktir Aihutuki Tvayi. Make a comment so I know who's here. So the word for word translation is Na, not, Danam, riches, Na, not, Janam, uh, followers, Na, not, Sundarim. Very beautiful women or beautiful women. Kavitam, fruit of activities described in flowery language. Va or Jagat Isha, O Lord of the Universe. Kamaye, I desire. Mama, my Janmani, in birth. Ishvare unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Bhavatat, let there be bhakti, devotional service, I hai to ki, with no motives. Tvayi, unto you. So that's beautiful. Uh, sometimes when we read the, the whole uh, verse, we don't get 
or understand the breakdown. Of course, Sanskrit's new for you guys. So, but here I'm just noticing that in the uh, in the word that says Janmana Ishvane, Isha means a supreme controller. So it's broken down in the translation um, unto the supreme personality of Godhead. Just a little, I'm just geeking out here on the Sanskrit, guys. Okay, so the complete um, sentence is, O Lord of the universe, I do not desire material wealth, materialistic followers, a beautiful wife, or fruitive activities described in flowery language. All I want, life after life, is unmotivated devotional service unto you. Uh, then there's an expansion where he says, My dear Lord Krishna, I do not want material wealth from you, nor do I want followers, a beautiful wife, or the results of fruitive activities I only pray that your causeless mercy, you give me pure devotional service to you, life after life. And then it says, in great humility, considering himself a conditioned soul of the material world, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again expressed his desire to be endowed with service to the Lord. So this, he says this verse from the Shikshastakam, but then he goes on for several um, minutes, you know, expressing his inner emotions and expressing his life and how is it that he ended up in an ocean of Neshen. So it's very, very humble. So he's taken this position of humility. He's taken this position of someone who has, has awoken and realizes the predicament that they are actually in here. So when he says, uh, I do not desire material wealth, materialistic followers, a beautiful wife or fruitive activities described in flowery language. All I want life after life is unmotivated devotional service to you. So everyone's got a motive. Everyone's got a motive in this material world, right? <clears throat> so when you think about what the goals of society are, what people aspire to, all you have to do, you know, is look at any hip hop video <laughs> or any, you know, any television show or any game show, right? The Price is Right, uh, let me think, um, what other things, uh, you, you, you get the picture. Oh, or, um, what is it? Shark Tank or, you know, any of these types of television shows. I mean, even the titles alone mean that here we aspire to money, not just enough money to make a living, but just huge, 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 huge sums of money. We don't want to just live humbly. Hey, good morning, Bat Mercy. Hey, nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you for all your lovely comments and, and thumbs up on my posts. I really appreciate it. Just uh, breaking down verse four here of the Shikshastakam, the eight part instructions. Yeah. So at any rate, you know, if you, so at any rate, people aspire to in this, in this, on this earth to be wealthy, to be ridiculously wealthy. That is the carrot that is always being dangled in front of our proverbial nose all the time. Luxury magazines, you know, if you only work hard enough, you could have all this. You could have a palatial home. You could have uh, dozens of cars. You could have a trophy wife. You can have all those things <laughs> uh, because people forget that living here is temporary. Of course, you know, now there's this, this phrase, living your best life. So um, Lord Chaitanya is saying, I don't want, I don't want those things. 
nor do I want materialistic followers. I don't want people just following me because ultimately, uh, you know, they don't love me. They, they aspire to have all the things that I have, right? Huh. That's very telling as well. Nor do I want uh, a beautiful wife or fruit of activities described in flowery language. Of course, Lord Chaitanya was married twice. Uh, but now he's taken the order of sannyas. He has taken the renounced order of life. And that means that you are practicing, your, uh, you're living your life on a very high spiritual level, on a very high uh, platform, and you have renounced all those things. But you have to really feel that way because once you've taken sannyas, to go backwards and to fall down is... It's kind of a it's kind of a disgrace, right? It means that you weren't really for real. It means that you were not really living on that platform. It means that you did not really have that inner realization. You were not seriously and really attached to the sound vibration of the Maha Mantra. You were a phony. You were a bit of a phony. Your motivation for taking sannyas wasn't that you were actually ready internally to take it. It's because you wanted to show off, because you wanted to show how renounced you were, you know, how, how detached you were. Of course, this isn't really a thing uh, here in the West, but, uh, you know, in, in Indian culture or in classic Vedic culture, uh, or even here, you know, you have, uh, you know, pods of people that are aspiring to spiritual life. And, and within that, you still get the mentality, you know, there's still, as long as there are those anartas within the heart, you still get that mentality of, you know, I want to be better than anyone else. I want to be elevated. I want to have more prestige than anyone else. And I have seen in my time uh, different uh, individuals who did take sannyas with the wrong motivation and were not able to maintain it for very long. For a little while, they were, they were given that platform. Uh, Krishna kind of gave them the benefit of the doubt, as it were. But uh, in short order, you know, usually within a few years, they ended up falling down from that platform because it wasn't real. I should say, I should say that their attachment to uh, the Supreme was immature. It wasn't strong enough. They were actually not ready to become completely renounced and live as a poor mendicant in a mood and in that feeling of ecstasy and ecstatic love where you don't care for all these other things. It's like the difference between finding a fake gold coin, you know, that's got chocolate in the middle, you know, or a wooden nickel and having the real thing. So once you are actually experiencing uh, true inner happiness and bliss, everything else is just it's you don't want it you know it just seems like worthless paper so this is the platform that realized saints and acharyas are actually living and operating on and then he says um or fruitive activities described in flowery language so the life is divided into four parts, or in other words, there are different Vedas depending on what kind of goals you have set for your life. Sama Veda, right? Uh, the Rig Veda. And um, there's, you know, there's uh, prescribed duties that if you are actually interested in being successful in fruitive activities, you actually have to perform 
different austerities and perform different sacrifices uh, at regulated times, you know, in specific ways. Uh, I'm not talking about anything dark here. I just want to make that clear. But in other words, in invaded culture, because ultimately the goal was spiritual, whatever it was that you were endeavoring to do, you know, that was always sort of baked in to whatever fruit of activity or whatever activity that you were performing to gradually get the living entity, to gradually get the human being to realize that there was a higher goal for themselves, a greater destination. But any, at any rate, you know, these things weren't done willy-nilly or haphazard. Uh, you had to have, uh, you know, the, the Brahmins there, you had to give in charity, you know, it had, you had to be done at a certain time a certain month, a certain time of day. It had to be done in its an entirety. In other words, you, know, you had to uh, learn a certain amount and practice a certain amount of self-control. But the Veda that is concerned with success and fruit of activities, it is hidden behind a lot of flowery language. So in other words, he is saying, you know, it seems more elevated than it actually is, but I'm not, I don't, I am not fooled by that. I don't want that. All I want is life after life, birth after birth, if it, if, if it is your will, is to have your devotional service, but unmotivated and uninterrupted. Because only when it is unmotivated and uninterrupted can a person actually experience the bliss that is our, you know, our birthright as spirit souls? So, how can I explain? It's like, if someone, if you have a birthday party, and your guests are coming, and your guests are bringing you different gifts, right? Because that's the custom uh, for birthday parties. Except in Denmark. I know in Denmark they don't do that. <laughs> uh, but at any rate, or they only do that once every 10 years, I think that you get a gift. But at any rate, when you are opening your gifts, you know, or when the person is coming to, to, to give you the gift and you are receiving the gift, you can tell who is giving you the gift purely. You can tell the difference between the person who is giving you the big fancy thing with the bows and all of it to show off, to show how great they are and that they got you this amazing thing and they want everyone to know it, you know, not just you, but they want to show off to all the guests and the difference between someone who may have gotten you something more humble, you know, maybe wrapped in something very simple some of you may have even experienced where the person didn't have any fancy paper at all. Maybe they only had newspaper to wrap it in, or only an envelope, or maybe they only had brown paper. But it was given with a great deal of love. Oh, God, I'm crying here. Let me pull myself together. <laughs> but it was given with a great deal of love. And the gift might have been very simple, but it was given with so much love that that was undeniable. So the Lord can tell the difference. He can tell when we are motivated, when we're actually seeking something from him and pretending not to, and when we're just giving something purely from our heart. The Lord has feelings after all, and he knows, uh, he knows our inner workings. He knows where we're at. So this is what um, Jaitanya Mahaprabhu is aspiring to, because even if for some reason... Uh, we have to stay in this atmosphere. <clears throat> Even if that is the case with all the vicissitudes and ups and downs, you know, that we find going on here, if we have pure devotional service, we have everything and we are really shielded from all the madness and all the craziness that happens in the world because our bond is so strong and so unshakable 
but also because we are actually experiencing the Leela. We are actually experiencing the pastimes. We're experiencing things in a completely different way and a totally, people always like to say next level, but we are definitely will be experiencing things in the next level where the Leela, the eternal pastimes, are actually manifested in our hearts. That is far out. So that is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is talking about. So I think Prince said it very well that in his verse, uh, well, in his song, My Name is Prince, you know, and I was there for the release party. Uh, was I even there for the release party for that one? Oh, no, I, I think it was the other one. Uh, no, it was for My Name is Prince. Yeah, I was in Paris. I was at Nell's nightclub. Somehow or another, uh, my friend and I, Carol Miles, got wind of this after party because we had been to his show uh, when he was on his Diamonds and Pearls tour, which was an amazing show. And somehow we got wind of this after party and we were there and we must have waited till like two or three in the morning until he finally came in. And he was very short. I mean, very, very short, only about five, three, five, four, maybe. He used to wear platform shoes, not any taller than Stevie Nicks. <laughs> and so we had to actually get up on the couch to be able to see him, but we could only see the top of his head. I just remember a sea of people kind of looking down and looking at him. And he gave, you know, the, the person, the record, the vinyl, they put it on. And, you know, my name is Prince, right? And then he, the, one of the verses was, Big cars and women and fancy clothes. They may save your face, but they won't save your soul. I've been to the top, and it's just a dream. So, uh, you know, for the most part, uh, we can have, you know, all the riches and all the things that we want in the world, but it's ultimately not going to protect us. A lot of the motivation... Uh, for acquiring wealth, um, you know, outside of, even outside of, you know, philanthropic reasons or, you know, wanting to better your community and all of those types of things. But a lot of extremely wealthy people are really operating out of a place of fear. They're not operating out of a place of love. They're not thinking all these uh, all this money, all these houses, all this material facility that I've acquired, it actually doesn't belong to me. I am the caretaker of these things. I've been given the responsibility for these things, but actually everything belongs to you, my Lord, and therefore everything should be used in your service. I am just the humble servant. This doesn't belong to me. This belongs to you. And by dint of that mentality, all these possessions I have become spiritualized because now I'm seeing them in their proper relationship. So how can I actually use them to glorify you? How actually can I actually use them in your service? Maybe this fleet of cars that I have can be used to distribute, help distribute foodstuffs, uh, prasadam, you know, to other people and to the poor, you know. Maybe this great house that I have, I don't. I can only sleep in one room anyway. Maybe I can turn this home into a beautiful center where people can come and they, they can actually learn the science of self-realization. Or maybe this enormous amount of land that I have can be turned into land to grow, you know, uh, different foodstuffs that I can use to offer, uh, you know, in... Uh, the worship of the Arch of Vigraha, and then distribute those foodstuffs. So it's a completely different mentality, you know. There's actually a, na a nice pastime of Jaitanya Mahaprabhu with King Prataparudra. And King Prataparudra, uh, again, he was a monarch of his time, and he had heard about Jaitanya Mahaprabhu, and even though he was extremely wealthy, in his heart, he was very, very much attracted. And he wanted to meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Mahaprabhu wasn't interested in meeting the king because he wanted to set the example. And he was uh, concerned 
that, you know, if I start associating with this materialistic person who is only interested in money, you know, and fancy clothes and how they look, then who I'm going to become influenced by that. I'm going to become contaminated by that because whoever we associate with on a regular basis, we become influenced by that. That's normal, right? So if we're associating with, um, you know, rogues and thieves, then we're going to take on some of those characteristics. If we're associating with saintly persons, then we're going to take on some, some of those characteristics over time. That's why association is so important. So when the message was conveyed to him by uh, one of his associates, he said, no, 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 I, no, I'm not interested. Tell the king, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not interested in meeting him. Of course, King Pratyavarudra was the real deal. He was authentic. So he was heartbroken about that, but he wouldn't give up. And he kept thinking, there's got to be another way. So then he said, you know, I'm going to send my son to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because the son is an extension of your body, right? Is an extension of yourself. So he first sent his son to try and see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a tough cookie. So I don't think that went uh, over so well. So eventually, uh, Maharaj Pratyavarudra humbled himself and right before Ratha Yatra, which is a great fest chariot, uh, festival of the chariots, which is coming up in the summer months uh, and happens every year in Jagannath Puri, where, I mean, um, in Jagannath Puri, I mean, there's like a, at least literally a million people out there for this festival where they bring out these chariots uh, with the deities of Jagannath, Balaram, and Subhadra, and they reenact a leela of, um, of Lord Jagannath, you know, going, going back to Vrindavan. At any rate, Maharaj Pratyavarudra said, he decided that he was going to sweep the street before the carts. Imagine a king. It's hard for us to imagine this, but uh, let's just imagine that the President of the United States, for example, decided to humble himself before the Lord, but sincerely humble himself in spite of everything that was expected of him and all his power and his prestige and all his wealth, just to get the mercy and swept the street in front of the carts. It's a little bit hard for us to, to wrap our minds around this, but this was a quote, a huge step down. But this is something that actually pleased Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he saw that the king was willing to do that because these kings, they had servants of the yin-yang. Servants did everything for you. You didn't do anything, you know, nothing. You didn't even get dressed yourself. What to speak of cleaning anything. So that's the situation and that's the state of mind that, um, and the state of heart that we, that we need to be in to actually start to feel how insignificant we are. That's the point. The point is when we get to this state, we actually are perceiving the Lord's majesty. We are realizing how big he really is. And then we're starting to realize how small and insignificant we are, that we're just like a particle of dust. And there are ourselves as a particle of dust, if we could somehow just be attached to his lotus feet, then we would be properly situated. But when we are full of ourselves and we're full of false bravado and false ego, and we think, uh, you know, look at all these beautiful women shaking their booty in my music video and look at all this gold and all these chains I'm wearing around my neck or look at this palatial house that I have or all these cars I can drive and we're just kind of, <laughs> you know, enjoying it all and showing off to everyone else, you know, how, how successful we are and, and how great we are. It's very hard in that state of mind to realize how insignificant you are in, 
in the, uh, you know, the splendor of the universe, because it's not only you, right? Then there's all the other living entities and all the, you know, the insects and the things that are smaller than you and then the things that are greater than you, right? Even in this material body. So this is the point that we are trying to get to. You know, it's not just a poo-pooing of material facility and material wealth or, uh, you know, attractive women. Of course, women are an expansion of the goddess of fortune also. Um, it's, it's not that. So, but this is just explaining, you know, that spiritual life is like a tightrope, but also that there are real symptoms by which you can identify a person who is truly spiritually advanced and someone who is faking it. Someone who is faking it just to get followers, just to have a comfortable lifestyle. There's a big difference between um, the motivation, between the real thing and the fake thing, right? So let me see, what time is it now? It's 8.33, I've been on here for 32 minutes. Um, let me see if there's anything else I can say say about this. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll I I will I will uh, I will stop there in in terms of the Shikshastakam for this week. I'm not going to elaborate anymore because I don't want to give away what's going to happen in verse five, but you can see the mood that has been progressing uh, throughout this Shikshastakam, where in the first verse, you know, Chepo Darpana Marjanam, you know, all glories, you know, you know, to the holy name that is able to um, extinguish the material suffering that's like a blazing fire that we feel in this material world while simultaneously extinguishing the white lotus of benediction to all living entities, uh, you know, all victory to the name. It has the power to liberate us and to cleanse us and to release us. And here's my doggy. Okay, welcome, Mr. Noah. And uh, <laughs> so, and then uh, by the by the second one, then we're starting to get into the technicalities of it. Um, where he's actually explaining um, that the the name is invested with all potencies, right? that there is no um, time, place, or circumstance that can stop you, that can stop one from receiving the benefits of chanting the sound incarnation of the Supreme and also giving a clue as to what is hindering us or standing in our way from actually experiencing this nectar and this ecstatic love and this happiness that everyone is searching for. And that is the committing of offenses, which stops us from actually having the attachment to the names. So we got into that a little bit and what we can do about that. And then last week we got into the state of mind where one thinks himself lower than the grass, one who is more tolerant than the tree and one who does not expect personal honor, but is always prepared to give all honor to others. And that person can very easily chant, right? And now we're getting deeper into it where it's like, well, it's not only that, but also, you know, I don't want to get caught up in having a lot of money, a lot of followers surrounded by, you know, whole bunch of beautiful women, right, that are distracting me from the goal of life, and nor do I want to get caught up in the science of karma kanda or fruit of activities. The real gold and the real gem and the real jewel is you, 
is you, Lord, and is the love, you know, and the loving exchanges that we have between each other. That's the real deal. That's what I really, really, really want. But, you know, I'm here and, um, you know, I'm facing some, some challenges getting there. Oh, do you want to leave now? Okay. Well, it was very nice of you to visit. I'll see you later. Oh no, you want to stay? <laughs> well, it seems my my friends that it is it is Noah hour. I think Noah wants to make his appearance on uh, our weekly Mantra Monday. So let's get let's get him. Come here, Mister. Here he is. Here's Noah. Hey Noah, are you gonna say hello? Say hello to Bat Mercy. Oh, I get a kiss. Aw, thank you. Thanks, buddy. So I hope that I hope that this was helpful, and I hope that you know everyone is doing well in this time of uh, COVID nineteen. I hope that you are practicing safety. It's really important. Uh, I just read an article yesterday of um, eighty workers in Walmart in Massachusetts tested positive for COVID nineteen because. They weren't given or didn't have, they weren't wearing protective clothing. They weren't wearing face masks. And, you know, they were just kind of going on about their business, I guess, with all the customers coming in and out. Um, and they're, you know, now they are sick. And I hope that they all survive. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I hope that they all survive this. But I wear... Uh, the face covering when I go out, when I go to the supermarket or the farmer's market, I wear a face covering and I wear gloves, you know, because I want to protect the people that are around me. It's not, it's not about you. It's about the people that are around you. And it may be about you as well. Actually, a good friend of mine uh, just found out a couple of days ago that a friend of his just passed away, you know, from, from COVID-19. And not, not an old person, you know, a, a relatively young person. So other people may flaunt it, right? And they may not care and they may not be following the science, but there is a science to these things and we're not out of the woods yet. And in order to, you know, flatten the curve as it were and get things under control, it's going to be important. Intuitively, I feel like it's going to be important for quite some time to be taking precautions to do this. I feel like, you know, maybe a year, uh, maybe by, you know, January or something, we will have kind of gotten it down as to what to do and what not to do, you know, and kind of gotten to a new routine to be able to do that. And um, maybe as people gradually, you know, go to the workplace and all of that, new habits and things we're going to adapt, but please take care of yourself and take care, you know, of your loved ones. And just because you see other people not caring and, you know, not doing, doesn't mean that you should listen to them or you should follow their example, right? And even in my neighborhood, I see people all the time, and these are people with children, young children, going outside, you know, without face masks and face coverings and their children don't have them on. And I live in a uh, place that has a constant breeze that's kind of windy. So, you know, the air carries these things. And uh, this is actually a good example of how the conditioned soul in the material world is an illusion and doesn't re believe that they are going to die. Somehow, every person is thinking, the other people are dying, but not me. It won't happen to me, just to the other people. This is the grand illusion. So as we become more aware and more conscious and more sage, we realize, yes, I am going to have to leave this body. I am going to have to make a change. I've already made so many changes in this body. I've been going through uh, my, my old clothes and my old wardrobe and I've found a dress 
that I wore when I was about five or six years old. And it is so small, it's hard to imagine. I remember getting that dress and I remember, you know, putting it on and thinking it was so, you know, uh, sort of how big it seemed to me. And now, you know, it's like from here to here, you know, it's teeny. So we're already changing bodies. Even in this lifetime, we can see how we've changed bodies. And we will continue to change bodies until ultimately the soul leaves this body and goes on to its next destination. So don't be that person. Don't be that person and think that it can't happen to you and that it can't happen to you here and now. It can happen to you here and now, of course. We want to be mentally prepared and spiritually prepared when we make that transition. And that is our challenge and that is our goal in the human form of life is to be so serene and to be so fixed on the goal in our mind, even though we may be experiencing bodily discomforts or, you know, we make it go so quickly, right? But to always be in that state of... Uh, in, all the, in that state of ex ecstasy and, uh, you know, one-mindedness, right? Transcendental one-mindedness. So there you have it, my friends. This was Mantra Monday, May 4th. I should probably uh, read the verse again. Also, I want to let you know that at about 9.35... Um, the verse is going to appear here on the screen, or on my page, rather. And it's going to have the Sanskrit, and it's going to have the translation for you, because I always like to give that to you so you can go back and refer to it. Okay. <clears throat> so let me get back to... Let me get back to this verse. Okay, this is verse 29 again. Nadanam, Najanam, na sundarim, kavitam, vajigad, isha kamaye, mama, janmani, janmanishvari, babatad, bhaktir, ahaituki, twayi. Jai. Okay, so I will see you uh, next Monday for sure. Um, Wednesday is a special day. It is the appearance day of Nishringadev. And I think I'm going to repost a video that I made for you guys last year because there's a special mantra of protection that I want to share with you. And uh, it's very potent and powerful to recite it on Wednesday. Of course, you can recite it every day. Uh, or whenever you're feeling fearful, you can use it. <clears throat> but this Wednesday is <clears throat> Nishringadev uh, Mahotsvara. So I will be sure to post it here on the page so you can take advantage of that. Okay, love you guys. Namaste. Thank you for spending the time. Thank you so much, Bat Mercy, for spending so much time with me today. I know it is like way late in the Netherlands. It must be the evening there by now, right? What time is it for you? It's, it's uh, 8.30 here, so it's 11.30 in New York, right? So it's 11.30, 12.30, 1.30, It's like 4.30 in the evening for you, right? Thank you so much for being here. I'm looking forward to getting back to the Netherlands uh, at some point when, when all this is uh, settled down. Okay, bye-bye now. See you next Monday.